Hey, welcome back to Dad's Garage. Today we got a video that is totally Different. off in left field. <laughs> Something we don't normally do. So we have decided that we want to raise chickens. Um, a lot of cities, and I never realized this, I thought you had to be out in the county, but a lot of cities allow for chickens. Now there may be some regulations on how many you can have. Most towns that I've seen do not allow roosters, but chickens, uh, most of the towns around us anyway, it's no problem. Even the bigger cities allow chickens. Um, so we are gonna do chickens. So we are novices at this. So we've done uh, some research, talked to some people that raise chickens. We know other people that do this. Um, so we've gotten some good information from them, but we're gonna just kind of start from the beginning. So if this is something you're interested in doing, um, maybe you can learn something from the ideas that we gathered from these experienced people. Um, and then we'll just keep doing this as we go along and just kind of, uh, we'll all kind of learn together. But, um, if you're an experienced chicken person, um, this is probably not the video for you unless you'd be kind enough to leave advice down in the comments. We would love to have those comments down below because we are all learning. So. Anyway, the things we're gonna need, of course, are chickens. So we ordered through Tractor Supply a 10 pack of chickens. It was like $45. Um, That's not bad. No, not bad. I thought it'd be like 100 bucks. No, 45 bucks for 10 chickens. Um, and these things are like a day old when they ship. So mine are supposed to ship uh, Monday. They ship Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So, you know, early this coming week, it's Sunday now. Uh, so the next couple of days, they're going to ship. So I should have them at the post office. And believe it or not, yes, they ship them to the post office. Um, they should be there by Friday or so. So we're trying to get all their their uh, little kennel thing or whatever you want to call it, um, their little house. We're trying to get it all ready before they get here. So um, after talking to the experienced people, we kind of figured out what we need to get started and we are going to use a tote. So this is a 27 quart, no, it's 116 quart, excuse me. And this is a Sterilite with the latches. The reason why we decided this one over some of the other uh, 116 quart is because this one was actually wider. It's a little shorter, but it's actually wider. So this will give them more space. It'll give them more room as they grow. Um, obviously, uh, I think 18 weeks is how long they're going to have to stay, you know, in something like this. So as they start getting larger, we're going to have to add another one or two of these, um, you know, so that they have room. So, um, we got one of these, this tote was like $25 at Home Depot. We also got, you want to grab those, uh, those one by twos over there? Oh, that's what they are? We got a couple of four foot one by twos, and we'll show you what we're gonna use all this for here in a minute. Um, we got galvanized wire mesh, I guess you call it, but it's like little half inch squares. Um, these two items are gonna be used to the top to keep them uh, from getting out. We also picked up some flat corner braces, because we're gonna use that to build, um, you know, the little fence for it. We thought initially about cutting the lid out and attaching that wire mesh to the lid, but I think, for one, that metal mesh is much stronger and it's gonna cause that lid to deform. The other thing I'm concerned about is we need to keep away, because uh, we're gonna have a heat lamp here, so we need to keep that heat away from this plastic as much as possible. Um, the other thing you're going to need is you're going to need some of these pine shavings. I think this was about 30 bucks or less. 30 bucks or less, I can't remember. I think it was like 26. Okay. We got a little starter kit. And in this starter kit, we've got our feeder, our waterer, <coughs> the heat lamp bulb. Um, so we've got all that in here in this little kit. This was $40. Um, it's a little cheaper than buying each of the pieces separately. This was also from Tractor Supply. And then we decided we're gonna go organic on the feed. Um, I know there's some 
you know, pros and cons, and there's some uh, debate about, you know, do you use medicated feed, and, you know, or not. Well, I want to keep these birds as organic as possible. So we're going to go with organic, non-medicated feed. Um, now, we are just entering our cold time of the year. So um, the, this is the time where these birds are going to be most vulnerable as babies. Uh, so we got to make sure to keep them warm. Um, so anyway, that's everything we're going to need to create this other than some screws, you know, we're going to need a saw and a, a, a drill and tape measure, but, uh, we're going to start creating this little home for these little fellas. Uh, All right. So we're going to do this about 26 inches long, and then the width we're going to do about 14 inches. So then what we need to do is we need to grab our wood. six inches which is right here okay and then 14 will be at the 40 mark or 40 there we go okay so those two four foot pieces of wood are going to be enough for us so now we're going to get up here on our miter saw so how do we know what direction this needs to go like how do we know it needs to go 15 degrees or what? 45. We need 45 degrees. Is Where's that need. at? Is that all the way over here? Correct. Uh, it really doesn't reach all the way over no, there. No, it's at 45. You went to 50. Oh, you tell based on that, Mark. Yep. There you go. And then we want to we'll turn on our laser so we can see where this mark's going to be. Yeah. That looks good right there. What do I do? Do I go like that? Well, what you want to do is you just want to go ahead and hit. Let's, mm -hmm. let's check our mark. Okay, that goes to the corner. That's what we want. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead and start it. And then we're going to flip them over. And we flip these over because what we want to do is we want all of our angles to come this way for our cuts. Like that, you say, probably? Should we make, oh yeah, like that? Yep, go for it. And then, we just need to set aside. We're gonna flip these one more time. Are we gonna cut where that is or we have to measure it again? We need to measure it again because we want 14. Cool. And we need a measure like that, right? You're good, yeah. All right, got a few pieces of scrap, but other than that, this is what we need, right? That's what we need. All right, so while Josh has opened up the brackets over there, we're going to kind of get this laid out so you can kind of see how this is going to work. So basically here what we've done is we've got our frame built out. And that's what it's going to look like. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and lay this down. And what I want to do is I want this little corner right here in the crack, and I want this inside corner in the crack. And right about center. Mark it. And then we're going to mark all of our holes. Cool. I do it over here. Yes. Is that how you want it? Right there? Well, you got to butt the corner up real good because you want it butted up nice, just like this. Like that? You said have it butted up? Yep, inside and out. We want like it that? Nice. Yep. Now, is that fine? No, there you go. That looks pretty good. Okay, and now we're going to take our little screws and get one of these out. Now what? And where's the drill bits? Oh, they're right there. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to grab a drill bit 
to pre-drill these holes so that we don't get this lumber cracking. What are you doing? Measuring what size drill bit we want to use. Oh, okay. And I think that one's pretty perfect. So if you're new to this, basically what you want to do is you want to take the drill bit, set it on top of the screw, and pretty much just see threads on both sides of the drill bit. Yep. So you don't need to go very deep. Okay. So maybe half inch deep. How deep uh, is that? Just let it hang off the edge. Okay. So you don't you drill you into do, it. I accidentally drill through it. Like that? So what I did was just ran over there to the toolbox to get a drill stop. Since Joshua doesn't can't judge how far a half inch is, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and put this drill stop on here. I hope this one will work. Maybe too big, but I don't have any smaller. So I'm gonna judge about a half inch there, roughly. This isn't any kind of rocket science, so yeah, that's gonna work. There we go. And what that'll do is now that'll stop him so he'll know how deep he can go in this hole. I did pretty close. Pretty close. Keep it spinning. To come back out of the hole, you keep it spinning. All right. Now, while we should have been doing all this on the workbench, um, we did it all here, but now we're gonna go over the workbench because when we put this together, we want this to be good and square. We don't want it to be on this lid that's uneven. So let's head over the workbench. All right, so we're getting our gloves on because the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open this wire and we're gonna measure this wire. And these edges can be sharp, so it's, that's why we have the gloves on. Boy, these old things are... Those do look old. Rusty. <laughs> Go shoot it with some WD-40 so they actually work. Okay. Another way you could cut this a little faster would be like with a cutoff wheel. A what? Cutoff wheel. What's that? Uh, like with the Dremel tool or air powered or with, you know, like a battery powered wall oh, or okay. whatever. Okay, so now we got this thing cut to the right size. So now we're gonna get our boards back out where they belong. <coughs> and we're gonna start with one corner at a time. Let's get these corners lined up. Are we going to put holes or, drill or screw it in now? Yes. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and get <coughs> our Can I take off my glove? <clears throat> yes. Well, I'd keep them on. I'll keep one on so I can, yeah, I'll keep one on. So we're going to start by doing this. Okay. 
So where do you want it at? Right through here. Like right there? Good for one? No, let's go to the center. How do I, what does this mean? That's how deep you want the staple to go. You want it as it's deep as deep, possible? Yep, it's already deep. Where do you want it? Okay, so let's do one right there. Okay. So just every few down? Yep. You want a trick? Mm. Okay. Do you like twist it or what? No, well that could work. But think of this, you remember when you got a hammer uh -huh. and you have a curved jaw, how much more force you can yeah. get to pull a nail? So do so that. So you can do it like that, out of the way of the camera though. You can take it, uh -huh. get on it, and then just kind of roll it down like this, like you were pulling a nail uh -huh. with the hammer. Yeah. And look, it's so oh, easy. That's cool. Yep. Good trick. Where was that at? Like right here? Yep. Cool. Boom. Thank you, Milwaukee. Is that good for now? That's good. Now we're going to get the uh, Next corner. Course. Yep. Okay, now that we got the top done and it came out super nice, now we're gonna grab the plastic lid and we're gonna set it here. And then we're gonna set this on it. I'm gonna flip it kind of upside down, how we're gonna do it. And then what we need to do is we need to mark this. What are we marking? Just mark some spots inside. Like there? Yep. Good. Yep. Now get some down each side here. And what we're doing now is this is going to mark us for our opening in the plastic. So we're going to be cutting this plastic next. Okay. Now we can set that aside. How are we going to cut this? First thing we need to do though, before we cut it, is we need to mark out our edge. As long as it's pretty close to good then. Yep. Want me to mark down the line? Yep. Are you gonna sand it? it sand it more. Yep. All right, so now that we got that done, Joshua's gonna take that inside in the bathtub real quick, rinse it off real good, and then dry it. 
because we want to make sure our little uh, chickies don't eat any of that plastic that might fall off of there. So we'll make sure all that plastic is nice and rinsed off. He's gonna dry it, come back, and then we'll take our next step. All right, so now that we got this all ready to go, um, now we're gonna go ahead and put our uh, chips in here. You can go ahead and put it on there. Now we're gonna get our other little thing. Are we just gonna set this on here? Correct. That just like that. All right, so that's it. We got it all set up. So when our little birdies come later this week, we'll put them in here. Um, we'll finish up the video then so that you can see the little babies and see them running around. But uh, this is getting to be very popular from what I'm reading, uh, raising your own chickens. And, um, you know, I'm not a prepper or, you know, anything like that. But it is nice to be able to create your own food in case there is some sort of uh, food interruption, you know, supply chain interruptions, things like that. So with all that's going on in the world right now, I guess we can't be too prepared. So, uh, but anyway, that's it. I like it. I hope our little birdies like it. We'll be back here in a couple of days. As soon as those little guys show up, we'll unbox them for you and then we'll introduce them to their new home. All right. They just showed up today at the post office and yes, they ship them through the post office. So here's the little guys. Let me cut this strap off. There they are. There's all the little girls. Now we gotta introduce them to their new home.